A sunrise in the South Korean city of Kosong reveals a sprawling coastline bathed in placid golden light. The sound of the ocean, clarity of the water, I mean, it's like glass out there. If I didn't know any better, I'd think I was in paradise. You are. Pick out the barbed wire here, and this is one of the most beautiful views I've ever seen. First open to the public in April of 2019, the Kosong Peace Trail provides guests with access to the DMZ from the eastern maritime border. And these images of the terrain are the first ever broadcast by Western Media. This peace trail was the first of three peace trails to open along the peninsula. They're trying to reduce tensions along the demilitarized zone as kind of like a peace hub mm -hmm. that incorporates everything from history, ecology, I mean, this is like a natural preserve, and also culture. What's so significant about that? I mean, 10 years ago, five years ago, was that even something that was on the, on the horizon? I don't believe that was on the table. Just to be here when it is open, the two careers are speaking, is a feat among itself. Mm -hmm. Along with the Republic of Korea Army, Captain Raymond Ishmael with the United Nations Command Military Armistice Commission has been stationed at the border for nearly a year and supervises stability in the region. From where we were, looking at it from afar um, is one thing, but actually being down here, being in this, being surrounded by this, it completely changes your perspective and the way it feels. I still have trouble believing that what I'm looking at is North Korea. Does this fence run along the entire stretch of the beach? I mean, how far does this go? This goes 2.6 kilometers north. Okay, and what's this body of water here behind us? Right here, we're looking at the East Sea. You can't have a physical border that goes into the ocean. You know, when you look at a map of the Korean Peninsula, you can actually see visually the demarcation line. Yep. On the ocean, we have something called the Northern Limit Line, the NLL, okay. which we obviously cannot see. But uh, where we're standing right now is basically where the Northern Limit Line is. At what point did the beach become protected and the waters become protected? Well, these waters are always protected. Maybe about five okay. clicks south, civilians can access the beach. <laughs> And it's in these waters that the proud Henyo women carry on the centuries-old tradition of pulling aquatic delicacies from their resident shores where Peng Rul Kim, Chung Hua Lim, and Young Oak Kim have been fishing for 40 years. What does Henyo mean? So the sea? Ladies, so ladies of the sea. One, two, three! Within very close proximity of where we're at, yes. civilians live here, villagers. That's right. So for them, military presence. It's just part of their daily existence. Look at this. That is straight military. People going off to work, kids going to school, women going out to sea. They are aware of the military tensions mm -hmm. along this entire area, but they're trying to make the best out of it because yeah. this is their livelihood. How beautiful is that? We're at the Kim Gum Corridor Gate. I think the optics of this place says it all. Woo! Look at all that! This is the most northeastern point uh, in which civilians can can travel. Mmm, okay. soil. I mean, this is the boundary line. This is where the road. This is where the road ends. Right. This gate controls access into North Korea. Into North Korea. This is incredible. That's what opening up this peace trail to the public is all about. To get them to really kind of experience the inter-Korean process that is happening. There are people doing the same thing on this side of the border as they're doing on that side of the border. So I guess a border can separate people, but it can't prevent them from living their lives. Exactly. <laughs>